Hey friends, welcome back to another quick explainer. This time it's on the inverse square law. You've heard of it, you've made calculations based on it, and you may have even feared it, but no longer. Because it's actually a very simple idea that has application in many, many different fields. But we're of course gonna focus for now on medical imaging and x-rays and how it affects exposure factors and whatnot. Cool? Let's go. The inverse square law is a fundamental principle of physics. So let's start off with the definition, shall we? Who doesn't like a good definition? I don't. It refers to the following. The intensity of radiation emitted from a point source is inversely proportional to the distance from the source squared as long as the radiation has not been attenuated. Or basically how the intensity of radiation decreases exponentially as it propagates through space. So if the distance between the X-ray source and the detector is doubled, the intensity of radiation decreases by a factor of four, you know, because of this little fella. And I like to think of it as geometric dilution, where as you go out from the point source in three dimensional space, because of the way straight lines spread out, the amount of radiation at each interval length gets exponentially less. So at double the distance is a quarter of the radiation and at 10x the distance, it drops to a hundredth of the original amount. And really the inverse square law is characteristic of anything that spreads out in straight lines from a single point source without getting lost or absorbed by anything surrounding it. And you may have heard of that toast buttering fable, which is the same idea as what I just showed you, where a restaurant has developed a new way of buttering their toast with a special butter gun. Genius. That melts the butter inside and sprays out in straight lines an even layer of butter on each piece of toast. Now imagine the sprayed out butter kept on going and it didn't succumb to gravitational forces. It'll look something like like this. Now let's put a piece of toast at twice the distance from the original piece of toast. Now in order to cover the butter spraying area, it'll have to be two pieces of toast wide and two toasts high for a total of four pieces of toast, which will intercept the butter squirt and will be only a quarter as thick. And that's pretty easy to imagine, right? Sure. I guess. Initially, we had one piece of toast taking on all the butter, or one squared, and now we have four pieces of toast, or two squared, taking on the same amount of butter, just spread out. And you can keep this going. At three times the distance, we'll need a structure that's three toasts wide and three toasts high for a total of nine pieces, or three squared, which is only receiving one ninth of the butter from the original piece of toast. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Now, there are some practical difficulties that occur with the inverse square law in general x-ray practice. First, in radiography, we don't really have a point source of x-rays, and it's because when the electron from the cathode hits the anode, it doesn't hit a single point, but rather a small area, and naturally the x-rays created aren't all necessarily coming from a single point. Second, there will always be some kind of inherent or deliberate attenuation of the x-ray beam, because x-ray departments aren't encapsulated by a vacuum, so whether that be the molecules in air, or of course the matter that it actually penetrates through. And lastly, the intensity of radiation coming out of the x-ray tube at a given distance from the source, which could be anything, is unfortunately not equal in all directions. Can you guess why? I'll give you five seconds. Unless you pause the video, which means you get more time. It's because of the anode heel effect. If you have no idea what that means, or maybe you do and you forgot the mechanics of it, don't worry for now, it's a topic for another video on another day. Just know that it affects the applicability of the inverse square law. Regardless, this inverse relationship or law is very important in medical imaging, and it even manifests itself in a myriad of other equations in physics such as Coulomb's law and Newton's law of gravitation. In fact, the inverse square law is what we use when we try to offer medical imaging or hospital staff effective radiation protection measurements, which is why you may have heard of the Advice of standing two meters away from the vicinity of an x-ray being taken, particularly for mobile x-rays for ICU patients. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you got some value out of it. And if you do like these kind of style of videos, I really appreciate if you can give the video a like. Go on, do it, go on. Now that you finished this one, you may find this other video I made on the linear energy transfer useful for your studies. So click here to upgrade to that video, stay curious and I'll see you there. Bye-bye.